let x be the set of real numbers, and let g be the set of two by two matrices of the form x, y, 0, 1, where x is non-zero, y can be any real number. Three questions. First, show that g is a group. Okay, is it abelian? Next, show that the action defined by, okay, we have x, y, 0, 1, it's gonna act on the real number t, given by x, t plus y, show that that's a group action. And then the question is, is that group action faithful? Okay, question one, is g a group? So we need to show four things. We need to show closure, identity, associativity, and inverse. So closure is gonna mean if we take any two elements of the form x, y, 0, 1, multiply them together, do we get another matrix of the form x, y, 0, 1? For the identity, we're looking for a matrix where if I multiply any of our elements in G by that matrix, we get that element back. And then that element also has to be in G. For associativity, we're just asking if we take any three elements in G, can we break up the product in two different ways and get the same answer? For inverse, if you give me a G in our set, we're looking for another element such that if I multiply G times that element in either order, we get the identity back. So let's go through this for our special case. Now, closure. So what we do here is we just pick any two matrices in our set. So I'll take x1, y1, 0, 1, x2, y2, 0, 1. We we'll multiply, so just matrix multiplication. What do I need to check to make sure that I'm still in G? I'll need that whatever's in the upper left-hand corner is a non-zero real number. Since x1 and x2 are not zero, their product can't be zero, so that checks. Then in the upper right-hand corner, we can put any real number, so it doesn't matter what comes out there, you're good. And then I need the zero and the one. So we have closure. Identity. Since we're looking at two by two matrices, the identity is gonna be one, zero, zero, one. The only thing we need to check is that it lives in our group. That's gonna be the case if we let x be equal to one, y be equal to zero. So we have our identity in the group. For associativity, we don't really have to show anything here. Associativity is just gonna be a product of matrix multiplication. That's gonna hold whether you're looking at square matrices or any type of matrices. So that's just gonna be an inherited property. So we don't need to do any work there. Of course, you could show that, pick any three matrices of this form, and then just multiply everything out, see that you get the same answer if you do your multiplication in the two different ways. Then inverse. So here, two ways we can go about this. We can either pick any other matrix and then try to solve for A and B. Okay, if we do that, we get one over X minus Y over X, zero, one. But of course, you could just use the rule for two by two matrices, which says, okay, you're gonna take one over your determinant, switch on the diagonal, negate off the diagonal. If you do that, you're just gonna get the matrix here, one over X minus Y over X, zero, one. And then you can check that. And if you check it, it's gonna turn out. So we have inverse. And you'll note the most important part, our inverse actually lives in our group, okay? So one over X is a non-zero real number. I can put whatever I want in for minus Y over X, and then we have our zero and our one. Okay, so G is a group. Is it abelian? Well, if it was gonna be abelian, we'd have to come up with an argument for it. If it's not gonna be abelian, I just need to find two matrices that don't commute with each other that are in our group. So we're gonna pick 2101, 2201, multiply in the different orders, and then what we note, what comes out is not gonna be equal, so our group is not abelian. How about the group action? So here, we're gonna pick two elements of our group, pick an element of our set. Then we're gonna apply our group elements to our set element. So the idea is we can either apply them one at a time, or together we get the same answer. So what this will get us, First, if I take the identity element of the group, we get the identity transformation on the set. 
Also, if I take a group element, apply its transformation, I can undo that by applying the transformation that goes with the inverse group element. So any transformation that I can do, I can undo. Now let's take a look at our special case. So we'll pick two matrices in our group, x1, y1, 0, 1, x2, y2, 0, 1, and then our set element in the real line is going to be t. So we apply our transformation, get x2, t plus y2, and then I apply our group element to this element here, and then what comes out is this. If I multiply our group elements together first, we'll get this matrix here, and then what comes out is this, and then we note that these two terms are equal. So we have a group action. We want to show that's faithful. What's the idea here? Well, we're looking for all group elements that give us the identity transformation. If we're faithful, then the only one that gives us the identity transformation is the identity group element. So let's set up that equation. So that'll be, take any group element, okay, we're gonna apply that to T, we're gonna get T back for all T in the real line. So when we write out the equation, what happens? We're gonna to have to have X equals one, Y equals zero, which means we started out with the identity matrix. So our action is faithful. Now what does faithful get us? That means if I take any two distinct group elements, the transformations that come out are also distinct. So if I leave the room, you pick a group element, apply it to the real line, when I come back in, I can tell you exactly which group element you used. That's going to mean our group is a genuine group of permutations on the real line. If we think strictly in terms of permutations of the real line, we could take out all the matrix notation. Then what we have is closely related to what's called the AX plus B group. So here, the group elements are going to be pairs AB, A is positive, B is real. So the only difference we're going to have is that in our matrix group, we're allowing A to be non-zero. Then we are define a group action, AB acts on X by AX plus B. And if I want to know how to multiply two group elements, well, the idea is just apply two of these in a row and then figure out what the new group element is going to be. Once you've done that, you could show that this group is isomorphic to our matrix group. If we force, okay, here it'll be X1 to be bigger than zero, then you can go through and show all the properties that we've already shown. Okay, associativity, you have to show by brute force since you're not making any reference to matrices. Now, what's happening geometrically? We have AX plus B, so the A part is gonna take the real line and rescale. So those are gonna be dilations. Then, when we apply the B part, that's just translating by B. So this is where non-commutativity comes in. Okay, so if I do a dilation and translate, it won't be the same as if I do the same translation and then dilate. So non-commutative. 